When it comes to programming microcontrollers, you have many options in doing so. To make your life a bit easier, you might select a framework like the Arduino or Embed libraries. But sure enough, you can also start without any framework by just using the libraries your manufacturer supplies. With that decision made, you now need some kind of app into which you can write your code. In fact, even if you choose to use the Arduino framework, you don't have to use the official Arduino editor. You can use basically everything from a plain text editor to a full-blown IDE like the Atmel Studio. The standard Arduino editor has a couple of things I don't really like. And that's why I'll now show you my favorite alternative, which is called Platform.io. Platform.io is actually a plugin for a code editor called Adam. This combination provides a ton of great stuff, which makes writing code great again. First, it has code completion. This helps you write code by suggesting class and function names while you are typing. If you, for example, want to read out something from the EEPROM storage but cannot remember the exact function name, simply type EEPROM dot, hit control space, look for the appropriate function and hit return. Another great feature is that you now have a full file explorer. This gets more and more important as your project grows because it's a great practice to organize classes and other stuff into separate files. Here you can group them into folders and keep your project nice and clean. Next, Adam has a complete plugin system including search, automatic installation and update notifications. They call it packages. In fact, the Platform.io stuff is actually just a package for Adam. You can find all sorts of different packages ranging from automatic documentation generation over to FTP clients that for example automatically upload a modified file to your Raspberry Pi. Adam also lets you choose your favorite color scheme, font and many other design settings. I spend a lot of time programming all sorts of languages. In fact, I use Adam for everything from writing a script for a YouTube video over to Node.js apps and of course all my microcontroller stuff. That's why I really like to make my coding experience as nice as possible. So these are just a few of many nice things about Adam in combination with Platform.io. But let's keep things short and start setting up all that stuff. Well obviously we first need to download and install Adam. After a fresh installation, we then install Platform.io by utilizing the internal package manager. To do that, open up Atom, go to the settings by hitting command comma on a Mac, switch to the install tab and search for Platform.io. Install the platform-ide package and wait a couple of minutes for it to complete the installation. You are then be prompted to restart Atom. And you know what, you can now actually already start programming microcontrollers. But before we give it a try, there's one more thing you probably want to do. To get the code linting and completion feature, Platform.io needs a tool called Clang. If you are on a Mac and already have Xcode installed, it's very likely that you can skip this part. To be sure, go to your terminal and check the Clang version. If you get a positive response, you're fine. Otherwise, install Xcode and if you are on a Windows machine, follow the installation guide provided in the video description. Ok, great, so let's create a test project. You can do that by either clicking the button on the welcome page or through the newly created Platform.io menu item. A new project in Platform.io always requires the selection of a target board and a project folder. In my case I am testing on an Arduino Nano clone from Banggood which is compatible to the original Nano. After selecting a folder and hitting the process button, Platform.io will download all required libraries and boards that it needs for this project. So after closing the welcome page we see the initial boilerplate project. A project mainly consists of an ini file that defines the selected platform, framework and board. These settings will be used when compiling and uploading your code to your target board. In addition to the ini file it also created two new folders. The source folder is where you put in your Arduino code. The lib folder on the other hand is for external libraries that you want to use in your code. Instead of having an ino file like we have in the Arduino editor, the compiler here looks for a main.c++ file in your source directory. So let's create that and start with some basic code. Don't forget to include the Arduino library and then create both the setup and loop functions. Notice how nice it is to get suggestions coming from the code completion. You just have to type the first couple of letters of a certain command and hit enter to auto complete. Now this code actually does nothing at all, but it's enough to test if the compiler is working. You might already notice a new toolbar on the left hand side of Adam. This was installed by Platform.io and exposes all of the main commands like build, compile or start the serial monitor. To compile your code, hit the arrow button at the top. A new terminal window will open up and show exactly what is going on. If everything is working fine, you'll see a green title bar indicating a successful compile. Perfect, but this code is not really doing anything. 
To test the upload and successful run on our Nano, let's implement some basic serial debugging. For that, I'll open up a new serial stream with a board of 9600. And then, let's just print out something every 500 milliseconds. Let me demonstrate another great feature of Platform.io. If you, for example, forget the semicolon at the end of a line and save the file, you'll immediately get an error and not just after compiling your sketch. Now, this time, instead of hitting the arrow button, you can compile using the command option B shortcut. Make sure your Nano is connected via USB and then press the upload button or hit command option U to upload the compiled binary onto your Nano. After that is finished, open the serial monitor through the toolbar or by hitting shift command M. Make sure you have selected the right port and baud rate and then hit start. We now sure enough see the output coming every 500 milliseconds. So what's next? We covered the initial setup and the basics in how Platform.io works. You now know everything you need to get started with your own projects. But if you like, keep watching as I go ahead and kinda polish the design of Adam just a bit. I'll install a new font which is optimized for displaying code. Additionally, I'll set up my favorite theme and tweak some other settings just to make it look a bit nicer. Obviously, Platform.io has a lot of features that we did not cover. But this video is only supposed to be a short overview with an installation guide. If you are interested in a future video that covers more details about it, let me know in the comments. Ok, so the first thing I always do is hide the toolbar. I do like a clean interface and most of the time I'll use shortcuts anyway. Then via the platform.io menu open up the platform.io IDE settings. If you haven't already, deactivate the home screen on startup. Next click on install and search for a package called file icons. This package contains a nice looking thumbnail for your file browser for almost every file type. Then I like to use a package called docblocker. This is a little helper to write code documentation. After installing, go to your code and when you start a block comment above a class or a function, it will automatically insert the documentation boilerplate for you. Back in the settings, switch over to themes and search for material UI. After installing and activating that, things are really starting to look great. Finally, let's install a new font. In your browser, search for Fira code and go to their GitHub page. If you haven't already installed this font, go to the how to install page and follow the easy installation guide. Back in Adam, switch to the editors tab in the settings menu and type in Fira code as your font name. Now I like to use a larger font, so I'll choose something like a size of 17 and a line height of 1.8. Then as a last step, I'll activate the colored file icons in the package settings and then give Adam a restart. Perfect, that's about it for today. We now have a very nice looking Arduino IDE that really makes fun to work with. Keep in mind that there are so many nice other packages, themes and features that we didn't cover. However, I'm sure you will prefer this editor over the standard one in the very first minute you use it. So I hope you had a great time watching this video. Happy hacking and I'll see you next time.